It all began when a Swedish young actress left her husband and baby girl to seek for adventure in the other side of the ocean. Little did she know this would change her life. She was Ingrid Bergman. The reason of the trip was the North American motion picture Intermezzo. The year was 1939 and Miss Bergman was 23 years old. The opportunity came after she had made a handful of movies in Sweden. Monkbro Grieven, the Count of Monkbro from 1935, was her first credited role. The picture portrayed the curious characters that checked in the hotel city in Stockholm. She played a little maid. That year, she also made Brenningan, where she played a fisherwoman seduced by a preacher who ends up perishing crushed by guilt. A year later, in 1936, she was directed by the well-known Swedish director Gustav Molander in Passosidan, in which she portrays a bank clerk who succumbs to the wealth and charm of an older man. In her autobiography, Ingrid Bergman, My Story, she nostalgically evokes the important part Molander played in her life. But she played her most important part some months later. She was Anita Hoffman, a young pianist who falls in love with the famous violinist Holger Brandt, that was her idol and the father of one of her students. She didn't seem to be embarrassed at all to play opposite Gosta Ekman, 15 years her senior and much more experienced than she was. Quite the opposite, as we can see by the passion and life she emanates as she opens her heart to Holger. Let's forget for a moment the meaning of the words and pay attention to the music of Ingrid's voice, either when she speaks or sings. Leende ansikten skymtade. Caféerna fylldes till trängsel. Och genom de öppna dörrarna så strömmade musiken ut. Ungdomens och glädjens melodier. Där var det jag såg er första gång. I skepnaden av en vinervall. Nej! Jag vill. Det var i Budapest. Det var en sommarnatt. Jag stod utanför Café Ungaria. Sienarna spelade fryringsrausen. Det var ni. The Swedish intermezzo made her noticed in North America. Soon, the producer David O. Selznick, owner of the Selznick International, sent the talent hunter Catherine Brown to Sweden to put Ingrid Bergman under a contract. But Miss Brown wasn't comfortable with the idea of parting that young and shy woman from her husband and baby. After she told Ingrid that, she replied, if there are in Hollywood people as lovely as you are, then I'm sure I'm going to like it, so I'll take the chance. She left her husband and child in Sweden for a three-month period in Hollywood. However, her memories of her arrival there are not the sweetest. In her autobiography, she affirms nobody was surprised with her looks. In fact, she wasn't at all like the rest of the Hollywood stars and didn't want to look like them either. She remembers that Selznick wanted to change her look before he sent her to the studio. Your teeth need mending, he said, as much as your eyebrows. Moreover, you need to wear some makeup. As she says, her answer was, 
I think you made a big mistake, Mr. Selznick. I thought you saw me in the picture intermezzo and that you liked me. And now that you see me here, you want to change everything, so I prefer not to do the picture. There isn't going to be any problem, let's just forget everything. I'll take the first train and go back home. Thank God Ingrid turned out to be so stubborn and that she didn't take that train back home. Or we would have lost one of the finest actresses of all times. In the American version of Intermezzo, she repeats the character she played in the Swedish one. This time, she plays it opposite another very well-known actor, Leslie Howard. Miss Bergman sparkles in this picture. The fact that she is not speaking her native language is just a detail. She manages to be so subtle that she is able to portray it in a precise way the role of a passionate young woman she knows that she is nothing but an intermezzo in her lover's life. The movie title works perfectly. The word intermezzo means a musical play executed between two acts of a theater play or an opera. The beautiful pianist knew she loved the Holger in vain. She knew he had to go back to his wife and children. All the honored husbands portrayed in the regular motion pictures that time had. But before she goes away from his life, she dazzles us. Let's watch her as she invites Holger to listen to the spring and live with her the intermezzo of his life. Thing that you couldn't be. Tonight I would dare anything. <laughs> oh, perhaps it's only the champagne. <laughs> Do you know what you remind me of? No, tell me. A Viennese waltz, smiling but melancholy. A melody of the days when Vienna was a happy city. How poetic you are. At twilight in the spring, the music poured through the cafe doors. Melodies of carefree youth. It was there I saw you for the first time. Phantom of a Viennese waltz. No, I was wrong. It wasn't there at all that we first met. It was in Budapest on a summer's night. They were playing the rustle of spring. Yes, that was you. You are far away. What are you thinking of? I'm listening to something. I don't know what. Spring, Ben. Spring. Ingrid remembers that Selznick took directors Gregory Ratoff's place in Intermezzo and personally directed her in her first scene. It is your first impact over the American public, he said. It has to be sensational. That scene was simple. Ingrid just had to arrive in Hogar's house, take out her coat and hat and enter the living room. Nevertheless, it was shot over and over. The version of it we're going to see now was shot in Ingrid's last day in Hollywood, some minutes before she took the train back to New York and then Sweden. According to the review of Intermezzo, published in the New York Times, Sweden's Ingrid Bergman is so lovely a person and so gracious an actress that we are rather glad David Selznick selected the quiet Intermezzo, a love story, for her Hollywood debut, or we wouldn't have been so conscious of the freshness, the simplicity and the natural dignity that are Miss Bergman's pleasant gift to our screen. The newspaper told the truth, freshness and simplicity perfectly defines Ingrid Bergman. Although she lived an imaginary life, she was as natural and real as it could be. 
No Makeup. This was Ingrid Bergman in her first American role, and that's how she remained until the very end of her career. <laughs> 